Hey there, come on in. Welcome to another edition of DXB Today. Great to have your company this evening. Thanks for tuning in as well. We're about to eat. We're about to make you very, very hungry. If you haven't eaten already, probably best to do so. We're talking homegrown foodie brands. Yeah, we talk about Dubai being a melting pot for all sorts of different nationalities. Well, you know what? It's a big old mixing bowl for international cuisines. Let's have a little look and see at what is coming up tonight. OK, so our very own Ferris heads down to check out Veganology, the first 100 sustainable handbag brand making waves in the plant-based community. Meeting a leading figure in Dubai's food scene, the founder of the Asian speciality food retail brand 1004 Gourmet. Plus, we have Dubai's top homegrown entrepreneurs sharing their stories right here in studio. And talented harpist Cindy is joining us for a phenomenal performance a little bit later on, guys. I mean, we've spent so many here, years here in the UAE that, and three of us, the one thing, I think probably the only thing we have in common is our love for food. Do, do we agree? Does the panel agree? I concur. We all love food, yes? I concur. Okay. I, I definitely love food and I'm going to love this episode even more so because we have uh, wonderful brands on, home-owned brands from Dubai, uh, but I think they've also brought in some food with them. What would you say is some <laughs> of your oldest memories of Dubai, Tom? Because you are also old Dubai, much like myself. What makes you feel nostalgic when it comes to some of the homegrown brands here in the UAE? Um. It's difficult to say, isn't it? Because I think a lot of the homegrown brands here, foodie homegrown brands, have gone a hot, through a whole evolution. I think when, it, when, when we got here, a lot of people go, oh yeah, you must remember Ravi's, etc. We get, Ravi's made a name for itself here, but it was a brand in its own right. Back in Pakistan before it moved and opened here as well. So it's synonymous with this city. And I think that's what's lovely about homegrown brands. There's not one cuisine, not one nationality, not one national cuisine that is synonymous with this city but people have come here they might have been working in a different industry might be working in a different job but you know what one thing they all miss homegrown food and, the, and, the, and the, the taste of their country they brought it here they took it upon themselves and that's why i love the entrepreneurs we're about to meet tonight those homegrown brands who've said you know what um i can, I can do this a little bit different as a niche in the market i'm going to take it on and move with it and to make business out of that, it's something that you love doing. Brilliant. All right, now our guest co-host today is no stranger to the food industry. She has a remarkable story to share with us, so let's find out who she is. Hi, this is Hind Al-Mullah, founder and creative director of Home Bakery, and I can't wait to see you on the show today. And Hind will join us in just a little bit, but first, we explore sustainable fashion in the region. Our Faris went down to Veganology, the vegan store that is pioneering an ethical lifestyle. Let's have a look. Hey, today I am here at Festival City Mall, specifically at the studio, which is a space for local brands right here in the UAE to show off and sell their stuff. So let's check it out. And here we are at one of our favorites. We're here at Veganology with the CEO and founder, Angana Meheshrari. Thank you so much for joining us on DXB again. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, things are new. You've finally opened up a physical location right here in Festival City Mall. How's it been so far? It's been great. We are still obviously in a new space, so breaking in and uh, trying to attract more and more people to come and see this sustainable space. We're very grateful to be in a retail store now and you know, bringing sustainability to people closer, uh, easier, uh, and obviously in a mall like Festival City, you get footfall, so we're trying to push on that. Um, and we're just trying to get, you know, uh, real, build awareness and build uh, the interest of people. Amazing, and what's not to be interested in? Because it's the first UAE sustainable collection that we've got and a lot of people will put a sustainable stamp on their products because the materials are recycled but the process in which you make it isn't always sustainable but you guys are 100% sustainable tell us a little bit about the process exactly so we are the first ever 100% sustainable brand in the UAE and we are basically not greenwashing at all as I'd like to put it uh, and in that to make that more you know clear and crystal clear for people we are basically getting uh, sustainable certifications so we are a PETA certified brand we have got global recycled standard on all our fabrics and you know every day we make sure that uh, everything from 
the beginning of the supply chain till the end when the customer receives it, there is no animal harmed. Carbon emissions are, you know, minimal. Amazing. And I know last time we spoke, you talked about your apple peel, uh, which you used to make apple leather. Right. Uh, and you, you're going to expand on that, aren't you? Yes, exactly. So we've been working on that. We've expanded even more. And now we've got uh, iPad and laptop sleeves, which are made from 10, 20 and 30 p apples, respectively. Um, and, you know, that just shows that Apple is very much something that can be sustainable, it can be reused, it's a strong, durable material, and of course, it's very much something that can be used in your day-to-day -day life without any wear and tear. Well, I mean, it looks like it's uh, going amazing, and of course, you have your location in Wafi Mall, which I think is doing great, uh, but there's lazy people like me that would like to get stuff off the website, so that has everything on it, right? Everything. In both locations and online, everything is available. We do free shipping for UAE and GCC. Uh, we're also doing shipping globally to make it even reach global customers around the world. Um, and you know, we're always here. The team is always ready to help educate the consu consumer, uh, push on our uh, you know awareness. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all doing our bit to help our environment. And you know, as Veganology, we are committed to putting a mangrove tree on the UAE coastline for every sale that we get. And um, and that will also help us push and recover our planet. Amazing. And Ghana, you've proved that sustainability can meet style. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Thank you so much, Ferris. Thank you for having me. So big thanks to Ferris down there checking out uh, the extraordinary work down at the studio and, of course, Veganology more specifically. Now, our guest co-host today is a trailblazing Emirati entrepreneur and founder of, well, the home bakery speaks for itself, a name synonymous uh, with delicious and handcrafted desserts and much more. Uh, from a humble beginnings in her home kitchen back in what, 2011, pursuing further education at establishments like Gordon Bleu and of course Harvard Business School. Please welcome the visionary leader, inspiring resilience uh, through her creativity and food. Hind Al Mola. Hind, lovely to see you as always. Thank you for having me. Not just creativity, diplomacy as well. Listen, I've heard of food as a gift. I've heard of food as a peace offering as well. I've heard of food as where the deals get done, etc. But food as a diplomatic tool <laughs> as well. I mean, you're just back from Davos, one of the biggest uh, com coming together is the World Economic Forum, yeah. Davos over in Switzerland as well. Deals getting done over food? Yes, absolutely. Conversation started over food? Everything. Like, I, I actually have an encounter where one of the ministers came out of the meeting and he's like, where is Hind? And I was like, I'm here. He's like, what is this thing? You made this. It's so amazing. I had 12 of it inside. And I was like, great. And he's like, I want this guy to try it. And I was like, I'm looking at this guy and he's the, the CEO of it, Salat. And I'm like, OK. And he's like, wait, I want some more. I want to show him. So I, I was going to go into the kitchen. He's like, wait, wait, I'll go into the kitchen. So we were having this fight where not fight it was like please can you get out of the kitchen Prime, <laughs> please minister get out of the kitchen so i can go in and he was like no 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 i'm and, and it was like i can't have a minister inside the <coughs> kitchen please get out of the kitchen so i can actually serve you the food but it was they were very humble they were very nice but what was nice about this as well was they were introducing people to our food because it was like there was a lot of twists in whatever i was presenting so they're like oh you have to try this this is my grandma makes it this way and this mm. way so it was very nice that they had that connection not just me, they had that connection with the food because they remember the flavors and they were sort of explaining it to the guests that were arriving. Mm. So it was very nice to kind of have them take over what I do. Hind, I mean, I, I believe we all have an emotional connection when it comes to food. We were just talking about that a little bit earlier on uh, at the top of the show. Uh, I understand that the bakery business in general is not an easy one. And how I know this is because I was at a lunch once with somebody who owned a cake shop. Yeah. And she was on the phone with a customer who was fighting with her, saying that the, the multi-layered cake that she ordered was shorter by half a centimeter. Oh, wow. And I was like, my goodness, who measures the cake? I mean, that's a little bit oh, that's ridiculous. Extreme. And that's yeah, extreme. Exactly. So from that, I, I kind of got the impression that this is a very tough industry to be in. It is. It definitely is. And especially during the beginning days when I was handling the orders by phone, um, you there are some customers who are lovely to work with and you just always you just wait for their phone call you know and you wait for them to order and then you see them in store for the first time and then there are these customers who are like take a very deep breath <laughs> calm yourself calm your nerves and put a smile on your face because whatever they're going to say you have to make sure that customer is always right 
and you have to make them come out of there with a smile. I remember I had an incident where I had this customer that was on the phone with me for like an hour and I had my son in the back of my car seat and he was screaming his head off and she can hear all this <laughs> and she was asking me about every single, this was back when I was at home, so she was asking about every single dessert I have and in specific detail like what are the ingredients and what's in this and what's in that and I was very patient and I was answering every single question and by the end of the call she comes to me she's like you know what I didn't mean to order from you I wanted to see your reaction <laughs> and I was like okay wow. and she was like but now because you responded in such a respectful manner and you answered every single question in a very nice way, I'm going to order from you now. You gained me as a customer. <laughs> you should have seen oh me goodness. sitting in the car with my son screaming in the back and I'm like, okay, thank you very much. It's like a mystery shopper kind of thing. Exactly. Isn't it? She needs a hobby this one. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm glad that I kind of gained her trust and I made her like me and, and order from me. But putting me through all of that was just... Just put a few secret ingredients in the <laughs> Oh, God, yes, yes. Like that, that was hectic. And I always put this as an example. And, I, and I, with my waiters, I'm like, listen, you will face people like this who just come and they just want to ruin your day. But you just have to put a smile on and gain them as a customer instead of losing them as a customer. And it's only experience that has brought you and led you to that this stage right now, right? Yeah. And this is what the amazing thing is. I, I, you wouldn't believe it or not, this is my first experience of home baking, right? <laughs> I have not actually delved and tried some yeah. of your delicacies before. Well, uh, so I would love to know about the evolution and how you first began and, and where we are now. Okay, so um, I think he's ready to have some. <laughs> <laughs> he's been waiting for this. Oh, you want the whole tray? Yeah, just give You'll me the whole tray. tray. <laughs> wow, this is so good. I don't know what I'm eating right now, but this white bowl over here is delicious. Thank you. So this was created for Dafo specifically. This is what has what it has inside is dates with toasted flour and hot oil and lots and lots of spices. And then this was very traditional in Marathi. And then of course the truffle is a very traditional Swiss thing. So you kind of they married into each other, and that's what what we brought here today. Um, coming back to your question, journey. the evolution, the journey. The Thank journey. you. Some hot chocolate while you're talking about the journey. Yes, absolutely. Right? Okay, I'll yes, do that. I'll do that. You're the best, huh? So with my journey, I, so my father is an academic, he has a PhD in law, he's one of the best and top in the country. So he comes from this huge perception of my kids are going to take over my firm and they're going to be the smartest in school and they're going to do well. Well, I kind of, I failed on that mission in every single aspect. I wasn't that star student. I never got a single A in my life. I struggled so much in school that they actually took me to a doctor and like figure out what was wrong with me. And it turns out that I was dyslexic. I had dyslexia and dyscalculia. And I'm not ashamed to talk about this right now because it's everywhere. And of course. kids need to, the schools and kids need to be aware of these things. And it's okay to be different. But when you look at the days that I was younger, you don't talk about it. Schools didn't even address it. So <coughs> I struggled a lot until I figured out, okay, what does my dad like? He likes to eat, right? So how can I? please him or at least make him happy just even if it's a little bit so I got into the kitchen of course at the age of 10 failed at every single thing I did of course in the kitchen you know it's, you're 10 years old you have a cookbook in hand yeah you're going to the kitchen what do you expect to make nothing whatever you're making is a horrible disaster and then at the age of 13 I created the first vanilla souffle what? 13 13 and, 13 and that was the first time I actually make something that's worth eating let's say and my dad was so happy. And then whenever we had guests over, who's making desserts? Mm -hmm. I'm making souffle. Of and he course. was like, oh, you have to try this. This is homemade. And my mom would tell him, please don't tell anyone that your daughter did this. She's 13 years old, you know, evil eye and everything. You know, my mom was like, don't tell anyone. Just tell them the, the maids did it. But anyways, that's how kind of I kind of started uh, touching, just touching uh, cooking and baking in general. And then when I got married and I had my own kitchen, and I had my own mess to clean up. That's where I kind <laughs> of expanded in the in the cooking and baking. And I was just still making desserts for family and friends. And when people go like, okay, Hind, what's your business plan? Like, what was your thought process? There is no thought process. I literally had no thought. I just got a SIM card, a phone. I put a blog on. And I was like, that, that's it. We're, 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 we're ready for business. I got my first order. That's how unplanned I was. I got my first order, and the first order, guess where was it? 
Where? Abu Dhabi. What? I have no driver. How are you going to get I there? had no idea how to drive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was my thought process. It was just go. I wanted to do this and I just did it. Literally, not a single thought in mind. Just keep him talking. Yeah. Because, or keep him listening rather, because he's not getting any of this. Oh, no, okay, no, no. Okay, 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 cool. Oh, okay. We feel a little bit left out okay. from this conversation. <laughs> I know, right? And you mentioned uh, that when you were in Davos, uh, you used a little bit of their local ingredient uh, or their love for truffle yes. and, of course, dates, which is, you know, synonymous with uh, the, the food or the, the, you know, the fruits here in the yeah. UAE. Does this sort of help bridge the cultural gap between two countries? I think so, because a lot of the people would be like, what is this? This is Swiss. Like, why do you even have this on your booth outside? And I was like, this is where the Emirates and the Swiss, and the Swiss meet. And, and they were like, so what's the hot chocolate? And I was talking about the Amarati hot chocolate, which was <coughs> here I infused it with chai. So yeah. chai and spices and everything. This has got saffron in it. Saffron, cardamom. This is banging. And mm. chocolate. And they were like, how I did you make hot chocolate? I love the fact that you're selling hot chocolate to the Swiss as well. <laughs> exactly. And they were like, are you serious? We're giving it for free. Nothing was no, no, so, no, so I'm like, this is showcasing Amarati <laughs> hospitality. So they would come and be like, how can you make hot chocolate better than us. People actually would tell them, I'm like, I don't think I'm better than the Swiss, but like this was, they would come and they're like, you guys have the best hot chocolates on the promenade. And I was like, yes. And one I of- I love it. It's like, it's like a modern day <laughs> version of selling ice to the Eskimos or something like that, isn't it? You take something <laughs> exactly. to the, the, the to yeah. no, it's, it's absolutely delicious. Thank you. Thank and you. we have so many desserts to get through too, and so much to talk to you about. So please stick around. We're not done with you just yet. Yeah. All the desserts. You're my favorite yeah, I definitely want to try some of those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what looks like yogurt or tiramisu, I'm not sure. I'll figure it out in just a bit. After this, we meet the founder of a renowned Asian specialty marketplace and a leading figure in Dubai's food scene. It is Chang from 1004 Gourmet, up next.